Hi, so this is the Gauntlet Hangouts, and this is session one of two for Crossroads Carnival. Crossroads Carnival is an ash can game currently available from Magpie. Uh, my name is Lowell. Uh, this game is, as I said, part of the Gauntlet Hangouts. This is an online gaming community that uh, you can find out more about at gauntlet-rpg.com. So that's my intro spiel for anyone who tuned in just to see what that's going on with it. So I have a number of sort of setup things that I'm going to walk through here. Um, and uh, then we're going to get uh, rolling. We're going to do character creation in the first part of this session, take a, a, a break uh, at the midpoint of it, and hopefully we'll be able to get to some character interaction and setup scenes and so on for this. So Crossroads Carnival uh, uses as its touchstone the uh, short-lived HBO series Carnival. Um, I would also say that Ted Browning's Freaks, the old movie, uh, uh, is another touchstone, uh, as well as uh, Brad uh, Bradbury's uh, Something Wicked This Way Comes. Uh, so the idea is that we are here in the 1930s. This is Depression-era uh, uh, America. This is the time of the Dust Bowl. This is the time of, of great suffering uh, across the land. And our players are part of a traveling carnival. People live on the edge, they live in the margins. They're in desperate straits, but entertainment is hard to come by and it is highly valued. And so uh, when these entertainers come to town, it's an important moment. But these entertainers, when they come to town, are also outsiders. And they're outsiders in more ways than one. They're outsiders because they're not from here, and so they're going to be treated badly. They're going to be treated badly by the locals. Um, they're, they're not going to be able to fit in. But beyond that, our carnival players, our, our PCs, are mythic. They are monsters, for want of a better word. They are, are monsters who have wrestled with what's uh, called the, the darkness that's in them, uh, and have got that under control. And they're able to see the war that is going on, the war uh, between uh, the forces of darkness and the forces of light that goes on in the world. And in this time of desperation, the forces of darkness are out and manipulating. And when they go town to town, our PCs will encounter that darkness and they have to make decisions about how they want to deal with it whether they want to try and wrestle with it and bring redemption or whether that they, they give into their own darkness to fight back against it. Um, and so again, our PCs are outsiders, both as monsters and as carnival workers that they, they travel around in this. Um, and what's going to happen today is we'll, we'll do a little introductory setup and, and eventually we'll bring our carnival to a town and explore a problem. And the, the characters will interact with each other and try and decide how they want to solve that particular problem. Now, I wanna say a few things about uh, the content here. Um, this is Depression Era America. And that is full of problematic content of all kinds uh, from top to bottom. Um, it's important that while we have that as a background detail, um, that we are really conscious about how we're using that. One of the things that Kate suggests in the book is uh, we avoid slurs of any kind, even if they're historically accurate, we leave that out. The only one that she suggests we use on the table is freaks as sort of a generic term, one that would apply to the carnival people and, and in place of other things, we'll use that word uh, freaks. Um, this is a game that has a lot of hard material, uh, depending on how we play it. It can involve uh, uh, abuse, um, uh, characters in difficult situations, problematic and emotional situations, um, and the question of people being treated like the other, being pushed outside society. Um, if, if there's anything that we hit that people are uncomfortable with, we have the X card on the table. Um, are all of you familiar with the X card? Any of you? Is everybody 
you heard of it. Okay, so you all know what that is. So if you're watching at home uh, and you see somebody do this, or you may see me note that someone has asked for the X card in the chat, that means we've hit some material that we're going to redact uh, uh, and move past um, without without question. I may ask you to give me the, the limits of the frame so I know that I'm getting past the right stuff, but otherwise that we can excise as we need to. Um, just so people feel comfortable. This is also an open table game. If, um, if, and I, I don't know if this will happen, but let's say you got in a situation where you were not comfortable and you need to take a break, you can just mute, turn your camera off, and step away. This is open table. You're welcome to do that. You're free to do that. No questions asked. Um, just if you need to, to decompress uh, for a bit. Um, so that is what the deal is that's what our structure is that what we're going to do we're going to start out by having people pick their uh playbooks and then we're going to work through the character creation process on those playbooks i'll answer any questions that you might have about the setting or anything like that or what these playbooks might mean um once we've got that done we'll go around i'll have people uh do what's called the pitch card which is answering questions about your character and then there are relationship questions, the sideshow alley, which build up connections between the characters after everyone's introduced themselves. Um, so uh, I'm going to admit right now, I love this part of the game. I love character creation. I love the the, the answer, people answering questions. I love people building up relationships. So um, uh, you'll have to bear with me because it is it is the part that I I, I dig. And uh, after that, we'll ask some questions about the carnival itself and get those things set up. Um, also, let me say this, uh, I can I can sometimes talk too fast. And as I mentioned uh, before I started the recording, I have a horrible Hoosier accent. If at any point uh, you can't understand what I've said, please stop me and have me repeat myself. Um, it will not offend me because uh, I can get going way too fast. Uh, so with that in mind, what I want to do is see if if people have a strong sense of what they would like to play and I'm going to, I'm going to call on people and kind of work through. Um, so I'm actually going to go on my screen uh, from uh, right to left. Uh, so Marissa, let me start with you. Uh, have you had a chance to, to look at any of those playbooks? Is any of those like, you're like, Ooh, this is the one I want to play. So I think the, um, I, I think I'm open to anything. I think the mermaid looks interesting to me. Okay. Um, I, I don't really know why, but, um, that seems like a fun character. I don't know, but I'm, I'm open to trying something else as well. The seer also looks cool. So that, that's the one that called out to me a little bit. Okay. So I'm going to put, I'm going to write, I'm writing down mermaid right here, yeah. right now. Um, and, and let's check in with everybody else. And, uh, uh, we'll see, um, Jim. What do you think? Have one of these appeal to you? Um, yeah, I think I most strongly pull towards um, the seer. Okay. Um, I think I can figure out how to make that character work. Okay. Um, uh, anyone objections? Du, du, du. No? Okay. Uh, then I will come to, to Jesse. Jesse, do you have a strong feeling? So the two that were the two that were sort of pulling at me like equally. So I'm 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 happy that Jim went with the seer because one was the seer and the other was the geek. Okay. So that makes my decision relatively easy. Um, I think like both of those had like the idea the 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 the, the secrets and the and the concealment mm -hmm. um, of both of those things kind of like are cool and I like that. And so, yeah, geek, if no one objects. I like it. Um, and uh, so, so uh, we've now, uh, Bethany, for you, narrowed your choices down to three. Um, do any of the three that remain appeal to you? Um, that's actually okay, because uh, the strong man is left and I'll take that one. Okay, perfect. Uh, then I will uh, hide the columns on the dog faced. Uh, hide columns and the snake charmer. 
All right. Um, so you, I've given you the PDF uh, in that, that Google folder, and it has uh, some ideas for your name, look, eyes, origin, indulgence. Um, so that's the first thing that you're going to work through is is figuring out those, and you don't have to necessarily go with what's suggested in the uh, the, the PDF. Um, uh, you're welcome to to make up your own. And then the character stuff, the stat stuff is super easy because they're already set, um, except you get to add plus one to one of those stats. Um, and I recommend uh, checking on the basic moves tab uh, and looking at the moves that you choose uh, to see what, what stat might get rolled. Question about indulgence. Um, I think you're you're muted, Bull. Um, Go on. So, um, like, how? This is more like a this is more like a, a like a what works in play question than like mm -hmm. a rules question, I guess. Sure. But what do you think? Like, how abstract can that be and still be functional? Like it needs to be something that you can offer me that like I'll want to I'll want to accept, but I also feel like I don't know like I'm leaning towards authority, um, but I'm worried that that's like too too abstract that won't be able to come up and play in like a, a useful way. That's interesting. Um, uh... So, how do you think that fits in with the 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 geeks? Sort of how you're you're picturing what they're about. What and, uh, right. even consider one thing: the indulgence is often tied into uh, 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 to your monster right. within. Uh, right. So I was looking at the monster within, and what 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 you like, what you what what cures it, right? What, what when you when you regain control is when you fear you are someone instead of no one. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. So, like, I was so like, there's like a bullying piece there that I think 
Um, like, like I feel things are right with the world when I'm, when I'm in charge. Um, so, yeah, I think that's, that's fine. It's, I mean, it is a thing that the darkness can offer you, can try and tempt you with, can put you in, in situations where that is on the table to, to try and draw you, try you over to that side. So I think that's fair. Okay. The only thing I'm now that I'm saying that out loud, like that's the thing that gets me out of the monster within. So it might not be the best thing as like a temptation to, to, towards the darkness. I don't know. No, I think that's that the monster within is when you actually get full of darkness, that's, that's what you right. have to do. And then solace is how you get out of that monster with it. Fantastic. Fantastic. Okay. Wow. I managed to misspell pitch on that there. I just noticed. Okay. I am pleased so, with this. This works. So can you clarify what, what, I guess I don't know what an indulgence would oh. be. So what do they crave that might be considered, um, you know, bad might be considered you know depraved or inhuman or or corrupting what okay. what is it that that the darkness could tempt you with okay um okay i have some ideas every frame that has power over others that makes sense or maybe 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 others' submission. That's like a little bit more. Probably a better word for that. But. Okay. Oh, there we go. Worship. That's the word I'm looking for. All right. You don't all need to hear this in real time. Okay. You're trying to figure out your stuff. So can um, my uh, indulgence be something like, so I'm a seer, mm -hmm. so I think something I would like is to not actually care about the future. I feel like I'm compelled by um, the power of being a seer and habit to compulsively look in that direction. Um, could I just be offered to be able to rest from that compulsion and not care so much about what's going to happen or is that not misreading the indulgence that's a that's a, a, a i think uh uh it maybe even we, we can go a little stronger with that i mean the, the idea that 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 you would like to be in a in a state where those cares are 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 lifted from you i mean and uh, jesse's put a couple oblivion stupor you know uh that that state of uh um uh, you know, 
uh, almost a sort of drugged out, you know, or drinking th those kinds of things that, 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 uh, uh, that could be sort of the stronger version of, of that. Okay. Well, the word that comes to my mind is numbness. So how about if I pick that? Okay. That seems fair. Uh, um, God, I don't know how to put it for my indulgence, but okay. I think I, um, I'm like, you know, big and tough and people depend on me to like solve their problems by beating people. Um, I think I want my indulgence to be like passivity almost like let someone else take care of my problems, you know? Um, um, I'm not sure exactly. Hmm. Let me think of how we would, how we would frame that. Um, is it a sense that, that, that you don't want to, you want to be able to let go without guilt. Like you want to, to, yeah. to, you know, uh, essentially you want guilt for not taking action to be removed from you to, 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 um, um yeah, it could be, it could be that, or it could be, um, Yeah, it's an. It, it's, I can see it fits really well with the strong man. I'm just I'm thinking of how to how to frame that. Yeah. And and I guess the thing to think about is if if a dark force were to come and and offer it to you, what what could they concretely offer you that would give you that? Um. Yeah, something along the lines of like, I'll do it for you, or you don't have to, to do this. Um, or, um, let's see. So it's freedom from people having expectations about you, right? Yeah, that that would work. Or like, um, I guess maybe being allowed to um, to not be strong. Oh, okay. Being allowed to not be strong, to, essentially being able to do that without judgment on you? Yeah, yeah. So I okay. guess it's still freedom from expectations. Okay. Uh, I'm just I'm trying to, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Abstract concepts. Does anyone have any questions about uh, any of those moves that they have for their uh, playbooks? Awesome. I'm going to give you a couple more minutes uh, to, to get those basics in there. Um, and then I'm going to start working with you on those that pitch card. Um, and I'm going to go left to right on the sheet here. So I will be starting with Jesse um, on those questions in a couple minutes. And I'm going to drink more caffeine. Mm -hmm. 
so one thing I want to say uh, before uh, I ask the pitch questions is um, the harm track is, as with other Powered by the Palocalypse games, harm is measured in five tracks. Um, most harm is going to be one or two uh, for most things, and, and unless your characters, uh, you know, push onto that. But the darkness track is your corruption track. And uh, uh, you will see in some of your own moves, but also in some of the basic moves, there are ways to create darkness, to add those darkness points to your character. Um, in particular, the uh, indulge your inner monster um, and the embrace of dark, the darkness moves both uh, require you to, to mark darkness. When your character fills that darkness track all the way up to five, that's the point at which you go to that monster within state. And uh, you have to essentially lean into that, carry out that monster within. Um, and one of the ways that you can get out of that is to find your solace is to have uh, and work through that to be able to bring yourself out of that state. Um, wh while you're in that monster within state, you actually clear the darkness track. But while you're in that state, you can still mark darkness. And if you were to fill that track up while you were still in, in the state of monster within, then you have given in fully to the darkness at that point. Jesse, if I were to start asking you about your character, would you be be upset? Not at all. Okay. I don't have everything worked out yet, but I'm I've got ideas and I like to think out loud. <laughs> sure. That's okay. So give us the basic the basic pitch. Um, who is Myrtle? What is she? What does she look like? Right. And I assume um, I assume uh, is she her? Yeah, she her. Okay. I think I put the I think I put the pronouns there. Oh yeah, you did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You absolutely did. Um yeah. So I'm playing Myrtle, she her, uh the geek. So she the look I gave her was damaged and empty eyes, and I think they're they're empty eyes that want to be filled, right? She's always hungry. And you can see that. You can see that there's something missing that she wants to fill. Um her origin is forgotten goddess, and her indulgence is worship. Um, and the concept, the concept is that um, she she was at some point in prehistory in some geographic location that no one, including her, really remembers. Um, she was she was a um, like a tree spirit or a tree, you know, a tree spirit who was worshipped um, physically. Um, she's she's fairly tall, um, dark brown skin. Um, um, like in the 30s, right? Um, I think that she would have been racially ambiguous in a way that would have been um, uncomfortable for a lot of people. Um, like, uh, she doesn't have the skin tone of an African American necessarily, but it's hard to sort of like pigeonhole, figure out sort of what her what her ethnic background exactly is but but she couldn't for for example pass for white or correct could, okay so like well so so right i think like someone glancing at her quickly she could not pass for white i think like if someone like took a good look at her they might be like well maybe she's like north african middle eastern which you know might have been a kind of considered a kind of white Quite somewhat lower on the racial hierarchy in the 30s in America, mm -hmm. um, but you know, like, you know, not cer cer certainly not someone you know who 
who would have been seen as as all the way white. Okay. That kind of uncomfortable way that people have. Um, and so it's not, it's, and she certainly has no idea where she was worshipped. Um, she's, she's tall. Um, she's somewhat somewhere between, like, she moves fluidly and gracefully, but her body is kind of angular um, and bony. Um, kind of knobby elbows and knees. Um, you know, uh, yeah. Uh, okay. What kind, what hair? What are you right. picturing? Um, gray, I, I'd say, I'd say gray hair, but a young face. Um, so gray kind of, kind of thin, kind of, kind of thin, um, uh, longish hair, usually tied back. Um, um, okay. What else? Yeah. Um, high forehead. So uh, you have the, the the geek move, which is about your, your performance, your show of, of beheading beasts. The, the geek is one of the more horrible old carnival uh, uh, bits. Um, and you chose the, the hidden in the hills. Um, uh, and what is what does that move do? Right. So the hidden in the hills move is no matter the place or time, you know if somewhere safe, add the following off into the list when you embrace the darkness. Uh, escape to safety. Um, she knows the dark places. She knows the hollow hills. Um, she's she's drawn to, you know, the the shadowy spot under under the outcropping by the riverbank, um, and she can she can fit herself there and not be seen. Um, Mostly, I also wanted to choose the move that gave her the opportunity to embrace the darkness more often. Okay. Uh, that was the other piece of that. So let's look at the pitch card, or as I've written it, the Patheith card. Um, and uh, uh, how did you end up at the carnival? All right. So I think I ended up at the carnival. Um, Myrtle spent a long time wandering. Um, you know, and like a lot of time in kind of like at first, or who knows, like her, her memory does not go back very far. She remembers the sensation of worship, but she does not really have any like specific memories that go back much more than, you know, 30 or 40 years. Um, and I think, I think, you know, she spent a lot of, in, in rural places, in forested places, in wooded places, and she finally sort of like, left them in disgust and found her way into the dust bowl and was basically lost right as a like an inhuman creature right eating what she could find trying to trying to gather appreciation where she could but without any real sense of how to do that um until she found until um the carnival rolled up into town one day and i think i think um i don't know if we want to, if we want to tie it into one of the PCs, we can say one of the other PCs, or just the 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 you know the the um uh, the person in charge um, said, you know saw saw her in saw her hiding, um uh, you know eating eating a live chipmunk, okay, um, and was like, you have a, we have a place for you here. And that's what she was looking for, right? And so she sort of recovered some of her humanity, you know, in in or not humanity, but some of her her um, uh, the human part of her, right? The, okay. the part that thinks and feels and cares, right? In in community with the other carnies, and that's yeah. been an important thing for her. I, I like the idea of the manager of the carnival having having seen you, having recruited you. Mm -hmm. um, brought you in uh you've come into the carnival you know the war goes on with the darkness why are you fighting on the side of humanity um because as murky as my memory is um there are sort of two things that drive me one from the distant past and one from the recent present um in the distant past right 
there's that 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 almost like physical memory of worship of right like humanity can give me that thing that i need in a way that um i'm not convinced the darkness can mm-hmm. um and number two i remember what my life was like um before the carnival at least immediately before the carnival you know sort of in the dust bowl lost barely sentient um you know barely barely alive in a physically fine but like barely barely alive in a in a meaningful way um and i know what i i life without community and humanity is not is not life that i can bear i think so do you think that's also the reason why you're you able to to not give into your monstrous nature? Is there something else to that? So I think I mean so I think the reason the reason why I, I do not um give into my monstrous nature is the is is my much more specific loyalty, I think, to the um to the to the to, to the carnival. Um, and to the people there, whether it's my my fellow freaks and monsters, or also like the human performers, um, I don't know. Bethany's going to tell us about the strongman a little bit, but I think I'm thinking about like the strongman character in Freaks, um, who who was who was who was human. And granted, also, I mean that the, the dynamic there is interesting and not quite what we're looking for. Well, I don't know, but um, like. There are human performers also, and I think at least at this point, we'll see what happens in play. Right, I'm still I'm attached to them, and and you know hope for their appreciation and their supplication. Yeah, it's one of the questions we're going to ask is about if everybody in the in the group is sort of non-human. Mm-hmm. Uh, so what who are we're, we're going to ask during the carnival creation is who are the humans who are there, um, and what are the relationship to them? Mm-hmm. Um, uh, so the the two unique pitch card questions the first one of those is what comfort do you seek in drink and other debauchery um i think it's it's that comfort of satiation right it's that comfort of i want to feel like it's always very social Mm -hmm. is what i'll say right like some of it is the alcohol and the drug and the sex of course right there's but it's the, it's it's also the and the food, which is right. But it's it's all about feeling kind of like filled up and and satisfied and um, social interaction is a part of that. Like, so you're not you're not that. drinking alone. You're not smoking alone. You are 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 doing this in a in a group. Okay. Right. The only the only indulgence I might have alone is I might eat alone because that's right. Uh, what promise do you always make and never keep? Oh, that's such a good question. This is the one I don't really have like a, a thought about yet. Uh-huh. Um, I'm, I'm happy to take, take pitches from, from the rest of the crew here. Um, what promises do I always make and never keep? Um, well, thinking about my moves and sort of, of, of who I am and, most of these questions have not leaned into some of those things so much. Um, I think that, um, you know, that I will be there. Okay. Oh, that's good. Yeah. I promise. I promise my presence and I, I can't keep it. Perfect. That's a good one. Awesome. I'm going to come back when we do our sideshow alley relationship questions is what I'm going to do. Uh, Marissa, uh, I'm going to come to you. Uh, tell us about who Pearl is. Sure. Sorry, let me get settled. Absolutely. Yeah, so, um, the way I envision Pearl, she's um, so she's a mermaid. Um, the way she looks, though, is well, she's in the dust bowl, so she's not in good shape. Um, at this time, there's not a lot of water and she's not in a place particularly where she is near her, um, near source of, you know, fresh, or I guess seawater. But she, 
her, she's, so my idea is that basically the, the, peop, the people that captured her and lured her um, to the, to the carnival kind of want to, want to continue this illusion. So they put kind of like seaweed in her hair, um, but it's all, it's all kind of, you know, dry and, and disgusting. And, and she's in, she's in, she'd be kept in a tank of, of water, but it's murky and it's not changed very often. So she's not, um, uh, she's not a, a beautiful specimen. She's more, she's more disturbing. Um, she doesn't know that she, um, she doesn't, she's, I, I, I picture her as quite, um, quite naive actually. Um, so she has, um, I would say she has, you know, or would have had a beautiful long tail that would have, would have been shining and glistening in the, you know, in, in the ocean. And, and now it is, you know, kind of, flaking off and 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 um and chipping and and that sort of thing so she's i put i took the look rotting um yeah <laughs> but she's she's quite naive she um uh basically my the idea i have for her is that um she wasn't any she was of a kingdom under the sea um, but she wasn't anyone special. She was just a, she was just a mermaid, um, who worked, um, and lived and really was not particularly, um, important in the, in her community. And so she, um, she would have ventured maybe, uh, to, to, uh, you know, look at humans, um, in a, a fishing boat and would have been lured into, um, would have been captured and lured and basically told that she was going to be um, the, the, the most important, most special um, magical creature because of her, because she's so unique and she's so special. And she honestly believes that um, about her situation. She doesn't quite know that she is, um, she's in not such a good, a good way. She thinks, uh, she's been given an opportunity. Mm -hmm. Um, and so, yeah, so that's, that's how I see, that's how I see her. Um, you know, you've got the, the, the siren song, that siren yes. voice. Um, uh, and, uh, you've got that beauty from below. Mm -hmm. Uh, how do you imagine that, 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 what, what do we see? What does that, that look like? How do you imagine that works? So, um, you know, I would, I was thinking it was something like, um, when she showed gracefulness or showed some sort of, um, uh, some, some sort of, I guess, um, some part of her that isn't quite as, you know, decrepit as, as she um, she has become, she is quite alluring and quite beautiful and 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 striking. Um, so you know it it she's she's just she's just not in a good place. And mm -hmm. if she were back in the ocean, she would be. You know, I kind of think of her as like like a killer whale or something that's in Sea World or something like that. With their with their um, their dorsal fin all flopped over. Like they, mm -hmm. she'd be doing great. Um, but she's just, she's just kind of caught up in this world that she doesn't understand and that she thinks is, is helping her. So I think that that's, that's how it is, is that she would yeah. um, show off or, or, or do something quite, quite beautiful and graceful um, that kind of, it dis despite, despite, uh, you know, all of the, all of the, stuff that she has to deal with now so so we know how you ended up at the carnival yep. uh, got lured in um given that that's the situation you're in what has has made you want to fight on the side of humanity so she's still under the impression that humanity is her savior and her um and the, the you know she has her own she has a uh you know a, a show people come see her they marvel at her you know she never got paid, nobody paid attention to her. 
before she was just an average mermaid. She wasn't anyone um, who anyone cared about. So she still, she feels much like she owes them. Um, she has, she, she gives them, she, she has gratitude for, um, for this situation she's in, in spite of everything. And, and how do you, uh, keep yourself from giving into your monstrous nature? What is it that's, that's keeping you from falling over to that side? So she, um, she, I, I think this is where it might get a little tricky, but um, mm -hmm. I think she um, has kind of this veil of illusion um, and or, or veil of um, of she doesn't really know um, what's what's what her situation is. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if naivete is a reason not to give in to her monstrous nature, but that's that's what I was thinking. Um, it's, it's certainly one that can get cracked, so I think yes. that works, yeah. Yeah, I figure if, if, if anything, if it ever got revealed or something terrible happened, um, she, she would, um, she might flip a little bit, so. Okay. I yeah. think that's great. I think that that's a, that's the uh, Chekhov's revelation there. Um, uh, how do you navigate uh, land with no legs? So um, I, again, I'm in a tank for most of the time. Um, I think, and I don't know if this is something that uh, I would have a, another player character or an NPC or, or something like that um, be, responsible for but i imagine someone um who who feels who either feels sorry for her or has a connection with her um will pull she, she might she may either be like the tank would be like on wheels um or they would carry her from you know one location to another but she would always need to you know kind of um it she can't be away from water for 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 too long, I, I wouldn't say for you know for no uh, none at all because right. that severely limit her her playability. But um, I would say that it, you know if she if she if she dries out, it's it's probably a, a bad time. So that's my it yeah. would just someone someone who would help her. I, I certainly love the idea of the strong man. Uh, yeah, <laughs> pulling, pulling. I don't want to. I don't want to impose that on um, another player. So I'm. It was just an idea, but I. Th I think that would be awesome. But um, you know, we can it's totally fine. Yeah, that's yeah. That'd be really cool. Uh, what treasure did Pearl bring from the from the ocean? So I I was thinking, um, it was something she um she stole. Um, from like the mermaid queen or princess or someone she um she wishes to to be or or admire and and she saw it either it, it was left behind or you know it was um something that she could easily just capture and she treasures it um because it's her you know it's her connection and she kind of feels as though I was I was thinking either like um like an amulet of some mm -hmm. kind or or even like um like a little a little like comb that would be worn in the hair or something like that something little um that she can that maybe she wears now um so i'm gonna the, i'm gonna the, go the, ahead go ahead no, i was gonna say the comb is such a classic fairy tale element that yeah i kind of like that idea so she probably wears it now along with her um, weird, gross seaweed in her hair. Um, and, uh, I like that. And, uh, and something that she, she cherishes because now she feels like she kind of, she kind of is, is a princess in some sick way. So nice, nice. <laughs> I like it. All right. Uh, we're going to come to the next one. Jim, please tell us about Alfred, our seer. So, um, so, um, I'm, I'm basing, I'm basing Alfred on, um, uh, very loosely on my, my, uh, one of my grandparents, they were, from, they were from the Midwest. So, um, so I'll, I'll give you that concept and then sort of build out on it. So, um, so, um, Alfred is from, um, is, uh, 
his his background is what is called Russian and German. He was a um, um, hundred years before Catherine the Great um, invited a bunch of her countrymen to be farmers in newly conquered Russian Empire territory. And it was really to like the settlers out west to um, nail down on territory that had nomadic people in it at that in, in that particular case it was the Kalmaks. so there were a lot of german communities that kind of wholesale moved over into russia and did not mix with russian society did not mix with russia and were kind of <clears throat> were, were outsiders once they're out outside their village um and they got certain uh special features that wore wore out over the the next hundred years like um like not having to pay taxes or not having to be drafted. And um, and a lot of them came to um, Nebraska. <clears throat> in fact, uh, the Russian German Cultural Center is in Lincoln, Nebraska, where uh, my grandparents are, my grandparents are from. So um, Alfred's family has come over there from, from there. His uh, background is a seer is it's a family trade. And it was pretty well um, integrated into the uh, once village, but um, town where his uh, his people came from, and I guess his monstrous nature is that he has this compulsion to want to um, be be the force that makes the visions that he sees comes comes come true, and that has overall been helpful in the past in his community. They've you know previous seers have able to come through and make something happen for the good of the good of the village <clears throat> so um even though they they weren't in the normal christian narrative they were they they you know they, they found a place because they were very helpful and so that background um grounds him and um gives him a good perspective on it gives him a good perspective on not falling for that nature all the time because it will more or less blow the cover they, they've been you know half under cover for for as long as they're as long as their family can remember um in russia okay before that in germany so um there's a start now i've got to move to the character sheet to see what i wrote yeah down. um well we've got a choice you get you get the cards that essentially the, the card fortune telling move and then you've got a choice of two Either that portents of doom or shameless. Oh, okay. Which which of those two moves looks more interesting to you? One is a questioning one. One is a strike the deal one. Um. Yeah, I can't really get my head around what this portents of doom would look like <clears throat> um so i guess i take shameless which just looks like um um you know uh, hyped up to certain realities yep I mean, it's, it's one of the it's a, a much more potent uh informational move here in this game and uh and i, I put my plus one into um in, into uh guile okay so um, um so how did you, I mean, you, you, you did this as your trade, as a family trade, this, this seeing, how did you then end up here at the carnival? So it came to my hometown. Okay. And, uh, I saw, um, um, they, the, these guys were outside. I mean, we're, we're, I was in an immigrant community, all, an immigrant community already, but, um, <clears throat> the, they didn't seem to have as many forces to assimilate in the uh, in the carnival as they had in the in the immigrant in the immigrant community. So that was attractive to him. I I like that. Um, and now uh, you've come here. You've joined in with this. Um, the darkness is still pushing on you as a seer. Now, especially now that you're out in the world with a little less of your built-in you know, family and homestead and ethnic support network. Um, uh, so how is it that you, uh, I mean, how, why is it that you're fighting for humanity? Well, I mean, 
you know, I'm still, I'm still, um, I'm still, I'm still connected to my family and that seems connected to the future without humanity. I don't think I'll have, a, I, you know, my family would have a future. Mm -hmm. So I don't feel that, um, I feel different, but I don't feel monstrous. Okay. To me. So I don't see a real rift between myself and humanity. That um, awesome? Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. I, I like the, I like the idea that you're fooling yourself um, on your monstrous nature um, uh, and that you have this, this lovely illusion about, about that. Um, uh, and, and is that what helps you keep from like giving in? Well, that's, well, I guess it asked sort of a why question and I answered it. I answered it as a how question, uh -huh. um, which is that, um, um, since my monstrous nature is to, is to be active as I connect to these visions, I just don't get close. So there, um, I, re I reduce my caring. Okay. I'm going to need you to move your mic up a little. Oh, yes, yeah, sir. Um, I, I, re I, I don't get close. So I reduce my caring. Okay. I guess I would say cut yourself off. Okay. So, um, and it's a, it's a social, it's a, it's a emo an emotionally connected loner. Okay. Um, what is your sinister destiny? What is that sinister destiny that's coming to claim you? Right. Well, I just can't, I was actually thinking earlier today about running a, uh, um, um, a, uh, world war two game for, uh, a fantastic world war two game for some, um, anti-fascist friends of mine. So mm -hmm. the sinister Dennis destiny that's coming to claim is, you know, the glowing, the growing, the growing cloud of fascism. Okay. In the next decade. That's nice. Nice. Uh, uh, concrete there. Um, and the last one is what lingering spirit haunts you and why? Um, <clears throat> Well, I'm open to suggestions on this, but the thing that seems obvious to me is, um, you know, I, I, I um, you know, I gave in, I gave into the, I gave into the monster within, and um, um, saw just um, a horrible end for someone. Like that they were going to that that they were going. I mean, I guess that they were going to be um, that they were that they were going to be murdered and had their throat ripped out. Uh, let's see, do we have? We don't have that werewolf here, do we? Uh, that would be an interesting connection. Um, but anyway, so um, I murdered someone merely because I saw it in a vision and just couldn't help myself from acting out. Ooh, okay. Vision overwhelmed. I like that, uh, uh, especially as it kind of acts in a little bit of contradiction to your your belief that that uh, you're seeing isn't necessarily a dark thing. That's nice. I like that. And I and I I, I do regret it. <laughs> awesome. Uh, and uh, I'm going to come to our last character, uh, Sandor. Um, uh, Bethany, please tell us about the strong man. Um, yeah, so uh, let me see what I've written down here. Um, Sandor is, uh, well, he's human, but like um, he made a deal with a um, like a, a goddess of justice. And by justice, I, I don't mean like a nice, pleasant justice. Um, this is like arbitrary god justice. Um, uh, like, I think he was trying to like um, help or save a relative or something, something, yeah, somebody important to him. Um, and in return, you know, he has to mete out this goddess's justice. Uh, and he doesn't really want to because he's not like normally a violent person on his own. Mm -hmm. Um, but he's big and strong and he's certainly capable of doing a whole lot of damage when he actually is violent. Uh, what is, what does he look like? 
Um, that is an excellent question that I did not think about. Uh, hmm. Um, he's a, he was a farmer and he kind of looked like the stereotypical, like big Midwestern farm boy. Um, it's kind of like white blonde hair, uh, scraggly goatee. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, that's perfect. Farmer's tan, that kind of thing. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, like. He, he looks, he, of, of all of these people, he probably looks the most just, you know, average guy. Um, he's just big. And you have the strength of 10 men as your base move, um, which which is one of the, the, the easier moves to kind of yes. define. I, I like that. <laughs> Bless you. Um, and then you chose uh, uh, un, unflinching. Um, what, what does it look like when, when Sandor... Uh, does that engages in that that stoic silence? Um, I think uh, I think he'd be having you know this this would probably be like when the uh, the goddess told him to do something and he doesn't want to you know mm -hmm. so I, I think there's it's like just this really silent vehement argument that like. He doesn't say, like none of it's out loud, but you probably mm -hmm. like see him like the face expressions and his mouth moving like he's talking to someone, like he's you know like he's fighting with someone. Um, but he doesn't he doesn't say any of it because like that, that would be weird. Uh, so Sandor, this this avatar of a uh, you know servant of this guys of justice, how did did he end up here in the carnival? Um. So I think whatever whatever he did on first gaining this, you know, divine strength, uh, it was just way, way, way overkill. Like it w so much, you know, did a lot more damage. I, I think he like beat someone to death with a rake or something mm -hmm. um, and had not meant to kill them even, <laughs> let alone like beat them to an unrecognizable pulp. So um, I, I think... I think he left um, out of, well, out of fear that either, you know, he'd be thrown in jail as a murderer or that he'd have to like fight his way free and kill more people. Uh, and I think he was just kind of wandering and mm -hmm. just came across the carnival and uh, was like, oh, hey, all right, I can, I can put this strength to, to use. Uh, and uh, is is that sort of why you've decided to fight on the side of humanity? Is that that guilt that was pushing you there? Um, yeah, I mean, I I still uh, much like Alfred, I, I still view myself as a human, and like so. Um, so I think it's not even guilt. It's just that, like, naturally, of course, I would fight on the side of humanity. I never considered anything else. And. Um, why don't you give in to your monstrous nature? Your monstrous nature is clearly connected to this this justice figure, this goddess. How do you keep from going into that that darkest self? Um, uh, to be honest, like it it really scares me. Um, I, I I have not. Um, if I have to fight someone, like they will almost certainly die. Um, so I, I try to avoid, um, I actually try to avoid conflict, I think. Okay. I like that. Um, and, and is, is that what frightens you about your strength is the fact that it, it can just do this horrible damage outside of your control? Yeah. Yeah. Like, um, I would love to be able to use my strength in moderation to to just like scare someone, um, and I would I would like to learn to do that. But unfortunately, learning to do that requires practice. Awesome. And uh, whose innocence did you destroy in your anger? Um, the person I was originally trying to help. Oh. They witnessed that rake murder. 
uh, yeah. A friend? Uh, 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 I think a, like, um, hmm. uh, oh my God. <laughs> no, okay. So it was like the neighbor kid who was okay. being abused by their father and like I beat their father to death with a rake. <laughs> In okay. front of them. <laughs> Thumbs up on that. That's that's horrible and dark. So I will give you, give you all points. You know, I took this character because I was like, oh, nice and simple. Okay, just I'm just big and strong. <laughs> yeah. The, oh. the... <laughs> awesome. Uh, what I'm going to do now is we're going to come and we're going to go through our sideshow alley questions. Um, each of us have three of those. Um, people can double up. Um, uh, uh, you know, have two of them with one person. Uh, if necessary, if an NPC would fit on those questions, you can say that. Um, what I'll have you do is if if you say, when we come to your question, you're like, oh, well, it's obviously this person. You can say that, ask them, and they can approve or not. Or if somebody says, oh, that's me, you know, so it's kind of all out there in the open, both sides agree, that kind of thing. Uh, so, Jesse, You've got three there. Let's work through those three. Um, uh, your first one is, who supplies you with your choice of sustenance and how do you pay them? So, so yeah, so I'm going to say that my my choice of sustenance is, right, we're not talking, there, there we're not talking about, like, my indulgence worship, right? There we're, right. There, there, there we're talking, I think, um, food, um, Right. Well, I mean, what I mean, I'm. This is a question for the whole table, I guess. Well, in particular, but anyway, like, I'm not quite sure what that actually means in the context of the geek here, right? Like, does that mean like the sustenance I use for my show, right? Does that mean like the thing I need to survive? Those things are kind of related, but they're not identical. Which um, you think is 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 one that 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 requires? I mean, does does a circus supply you with the the uh, uh, unfortunate animals? Um, uh, you know, what is it that that you need to survive that people have to get for you? Right. So, like, 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 part of me like wants to lean into this um, uh, this like worship need for social thing that I've kind of created um, and say that. Like, um, what, what I crave is something like human worship. Um, and that's, um, you know, that can be, that can be, that can be emotional or physical okay. with one of the, with one of the two more human of our monstrous crew, either Sander or Alfred. Um, but part of me wants to lean more into like the. Like, this is a thing, this is a disgusting thing that I eat, and, like, I need that, too, in a certain way, and that's also cool. Um, although, given Pearl's lack of mobility, it probably wouldn't be her there, either. Oh, I, here's the thing, is she could probably sing you up a supper. Oh. Oh, man. Yeah. That is so good song. I kind of love that. Oh, that's great. <laughs> Okay. I want that scene so badly now. Absolutely. Is that cool with you, Pearl? Okay. That works for me. That sounds awesome. Yeah. You sing me up my choice of like lean, lean prairie creatures. <laughs> I think all yeah. of our characters would be very that sounds yeah. that sounds so dark. Yeah, but you kill them and cook them first. I picture like Snow White with like little birds landing and yes. then like grab them, like eat them. I think that's awesome. Yeah. It's it's that, awesome. I love it. Perfect. I love it. Thank you, Lil. Who have you seen at, at their worst and how did you comfort them? Um who have I seen at their worst and how did I comfort them? Um, let's see. Well, we have, we have two people, um, whose, whose monstrous nature, um, led them to murder. Um, I'm not monstrous. I'm just flawed. <laughs> right. Well, so my question, my, my, my question is, um, I don't remember the timing on these. these. 
how how Alfred, how soon before you came to the carnival did this did this event happen? Or was it while you were with the carnival? Or was it while you were with the carnival? Um Well, let's make it easy. It happened just before. It happened just before the carnival came through my town, and, and that was another one of my motivators for um, leaving. So, so maybe I was on the advanced wagon, right? The carnival hadn't set up yet, but we were we were, we were scouting out we were scouting out you know places to to, to pitch camp, and um, I saw it. You like that, Alfred? Is that cool with you? Okay. Now I see that you saw, I mean, and uh, you knew there was something supernatural about it too. So mm -hmm. um, who did you see at their best and how did you tear them down? Okay. Um, Sander, this is on both by process of elimination and I also think by, by personality, like I think this, this has to be you. Um, so... How about you tell me what your best is, and I tell you how I tore you down. Are you cool um, with that? Yeah, that's. Uh, let's see. What is what is my best? Um, well, like I, th I think, I think when I use my strength for something other than fighting, or um, then. I think that's sort of a source of pride. Like, oh, hey, I can single-handedly lift these things, or I, I can, I can be useful. Um, so I, I think that something like that would be would be it. Like maybe you know, you, you saw me. Uh, yeah, I don't actually know like what. what yeah, uh, lifting heavy, heavy wagon. Wagon around, but lift oh yeah, yeah, I just like I did a. Yeah, you know, like like there was a, yeah, that works. That's perfect. Mm -hmm. So maybe the way I tore you down was um, later that. So you were you were feeling pretty good about yourself, and I could see that. And you were like, I did, you know, I did some good in the world. That kid is better. I don't know if you were bragging about it necessarily, but you were telling the story. Mm -hmm. um, and I just asked you um, if you. If you if you if you knew um, how the sawbones had treated that kid's leg, and like whether or not it was actually amputated or not, right? right. Like it just sort of like deflates you mm -hmm. to like realize, okay, so uh, the kid isn't under the wagon anymore. But you know, what does it matter? They're yeah, or uh, yeah. And now they're going to die of an infection, right? Mm -hmm. I, I went to all this effort and like was real like, oh yes, I, I did too good, and it turned out to be futile. That's right. And I asked the question real innocent, like, like I'm just curious. Oh yeah. But I knew what I was saying. I of course knew that was going to happen. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right, uh, Pearl. Let me come to your uh, sideshow alley questions. Who helps you get around on land more than anyone else? I think we've we've established that, right? Yeah. That would be Sandor, I would assume, would uh, yeah. carry me from place yep. to place. It's appreciated. Um, who are you in love with? What about them draws you in and what disgusts you? So I'm actually, I feel like I might, that might be uh, Myrtle. Um, I think, um, she would represent um, something I something I want. She she see she has this you know she's uh, she, you know she is a I guess a you know a goddess and maybe I don't know that but there's definitely something very alluring um, about her to me and something that sh kind of strikes me as someone who um, who is who is. Uh, is important and special. Mm -hmm. um, and of course, what disgusts me is um, all of the tiny animal eating. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but I, I, I give into it um, because I'm just so intrigued and so um, uh, so allured uh, by it. Yeah, I that's go. great. Yeah. I love that, that works out. Yeah. 
Um, and then whose eyes can you feel linger on you too long and why don't you stop them? Well, I would, I mean, Alfred again is the, is, is by reason of elimination, I would assume he, he would fit in. I don't really know. Um, I don't really know why I wouldn't stop them other than the fact that, um, he's, he's a human. He's, um, someone who um, also seems important and um, to me and someone who, um, you know, I, 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 we're, we're all, you know, I want the attention. I want the, the um, look. So I don't, I don't think I would, would push him or turn him away. Yeah. Um, no, that sounds perfect. Yeah. yeah. All right. Alfred, whose future are you always trying to keep one step ahead of, and why don't you tell them? Right. Um, okay. Well, first, I one question I had is, uh, sure. about um, how this is um, the uh, baby future is implemented um, hmm? is that it looks like it's partially implemented through moves. Right. So like I can I use the I read the cards and I can see past the veil of time. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> but do I also have other kind of see the future abilities? Like do I have like metachlorian so I kind of have a sense of what's gonna happen in most situations? Well certainly we can work some of that into the fiction of things, but the sort of the the big moves when you want to do things that change the game state, then we have then we go to the, the cards move. Okay, uh, so um, because um, I, I was just thinking in terms of um, the answer, of if I could see sort of kind of what's sort of happening in situations in general, I would be able to react appropriately or powerfully in um, a lot of a lot of situations, um, particularly when I'm not giving into this monstrous nature thing. So. Um, I would probably look pretty good socially as a result, I would imagine. You know, it's like in, in the Star Wars fiction, it's like, oh, right, you, you always know the right, right counter moves when you're fighting or something. But you could also say, you know, you'd also maybe know the right thing to say in, in different situations. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it justifies the roles. Yeah, it's, it's part of the fiction there. Absolutely. Um, so... Uh, Anyway, that's not my sexuality question. No, no, that's okay. That was, that was just a thought. Um, let's see. So, whose future am I always trying to keep one step ahead of? Um, 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 I'm going to say... Um, So let me check. I'm not sure I have a good, good conception of all these characters. I'm going to just throw something out. So here's my idea for Myrtle. Is that, well, I know that you were, um, <clears throat> you were a goddess or you were treated like a goddess. And my concern and perhaps is that you're going to try to reassert yourself as a goddess and start cool. uh, taking over things. Is that a is that a right correct read on your character? That is that is that is that is very is very good. I like that. Like I'm not sure. Like I feel like that. It's sort of like a step beyond where the character is right now. But like that's a great thing for you to like. I like that. That's yeah, awesome. Yeah, no, that's good. Okay. Great. That's uh, like kind of perfect. One down. Who comforts you when the darkness of your vision? Leaves you fearful and sleepless. Um, I think just to to to, to, to um, <coughs> excuse me. Um, I have a cold, everyone, so my voice is both um, harsher than it normally is, and I'll be fine. So I apologize ahead of time. Um, well, I think that would actually hook in with the uh, with uh, uh, staring at Pearl. Yeah. Um, it's, it's actually 
um, there's a reason, and um, even with all my visions, I can't quite tell why, but when I look at Pearl, I, I don't, I'm not pulled, to, I'm, I'm more pulled into the present and less pulled into the future. Um, so that's why, that's why I, I that's why my days keep going to her. That sounds good. Yeah. Uh, and then who has a malicious spirit following them and why are you helping the spirit? <laughs> Hi. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess we'll see, you know, we'll follow the rule and have a one to one, you know, one to one between the sure. questions and, and the possible answers. So Sandor, got it, got any thoughts here? Um, I mean, the, the goddess of justice who tells me what to do <laughs> seems like a pretty obvious choice. Um, and why am I helping the goddess of justice? That, I don't know. Yeah, no, I'm not. Uh, let, me, let, me, let me roll this around in my, my head for a second here. Is she competition for Myrtle? Like, um, maybe you think that she'll prevent Myrtle from doing whatever she has planned? Oh, right. Kind of a balance of power sort of thing. Yeah. Um, okay, I like that. Oh, nice. So, so, so the, the goddess of justice is going to be really present in this. Uh, Apparently, <laughs> yeah. Backstory thing. Backstory thing. I like that. That that gives us uh, brings the goddess of justice more concrete here too. All right, Sandor. Oh, uh, the question is, are you okay with that being a malicious spirit, then, Sandor? Yeah. Yeah, I, th I think I think of her as a ma ma malicious spirit as well. Okay, great. Then, then we have a, we have it. Uh, Sandor, who do you view as yours, and how do you show them? Oh, that has to be Pearl. Uh, I, I feel kind of um, like parental toward her almost because you know if you take care of someone, you carry them around on your back all the time, and uh, like uh, you know wrapped in uh, I don't know something that holds water. Um, you tend to probably come to feel that way, even if they're like, I, I don't know how old Pearl actually is, but um, I, I think I probably think of her as like a, a teenage girl, you know. Um, and yeah, her, think, yeah. Okay. Like her desire just to be special is kind of plays into that too. I, I sort of view that as childish. Um, so like I, I try to, you know, I, I carry her around where she needs to go and I like, you know, try to make sure she has everything she needs. Um, you know, talk to her when like nobody else is around and she's bored. Nice. <laughs> uh, who did you last put in their place and how bad was the damage? Um, hmm. Wow, I... any volunteers? I mean, I'm 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 kind of you know physically malleable. Okay. Um. Oh yeah, because because yeah, the the last one is definitely Alfred. Um. Okay. So the, this is Myrtle. Um. Did a okay. What what would have happened here? I last bit. Her place. Oh, we've already sort of yeah. been established as like a somewhat antagonistic relationship, at least. Yeah. Yeah. Do you think um, did, when you when you did something back when you're kind of a little bit mad, do you think it was deliberate, or was it accidental, or was it accidental deliberate? I I wouldn't have like physically hurt Myrtle. I don't think unless she. I mean, she would have had to provoke me a lot for that. Like, but I I could see like breaking something of hers. Um, okay. what did to break? be like, I don't know what is there something like important to Myrtle that she would have been super upset if I broke? So, so I think that that that, that Myrtle is not generally like attached to physical objects, be it like she doesn't have okay. sentimental attachments, but right, I think that, um, like useful objects and tools can become very important to her, um, okay both like as a way of like maintaining that like you know she eats she eats raw animals like live animals but she mm -hmm. like you know holding on to that kind of like human piece that that so i wonder if i had like 
I had like uh, a bed that that sort of like came along, came around, or something, maybe something smaller, maybe like a a comb. I have this long gray hair, right? That's sort of like a little bit unruly and hard to deal with. And like I, I had like a nice kind of expensive comb that just like worked great. Right. right. That was like exactly what I needed to, and and it was kind of expensive. Didn't look like much, but like it was a very practical kind of sturdy, hardy thing that was going to last me a long time. And I mean, you tell me why you broke it, but um. Uh, and and does 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 Myrtle know that you broke it, Sandor? Yeah. Yeah, Myrtle totally knows. I did okay. it in front of her. Like I like threw it at uh, at the wall or something, and like it just broke into pieces. Um, I, um, hmm. I like that. I think this might have been Myrtle. Another like Myrtle's trying to take me down a peg thing because she she thinks I'm. I think that Myrtle and Sandor could have this like fairly twisted relationship. Mm -hmm. um, uh, because like Murdo wants worship and Sander wants passivity and Sander would probably be delighted to worship Myrtle if like his, you know, patron goddess let him. <laughs> um, <laughs> so he's probably frustrated um, because of that. Like he'd probably rather worship Mur Myrtle. Right. Like maybe I don't know that you have a patron goddess, but that there's like I, there's I can sense that there's like something that is like keeping you away from me, and yeah. like I want to push on that, and that's mm -hmm. part of why I'm kind of like like you know a little bit a little bit snippy towards you, and like to like try and you think it would be the other way, but like I'm trying to sort of like it's that I it's that like kind of almost little kid with a crush thing. Yeah, it's like this. Um, it would be perfectly aligned, except for this thing, and we're both like poking at each other a lot to just, I don't know, just out of frustration. Yeah, frustration at the situation. I think. Yeah, that's awesome. great. I like that a lot, Bethany. Uh, and then, lastly, uh, this this question of who is a friend you believe would never betray you. Um, uh, you think that's Alfred? That's Alfred. Yeah. Okay. Um, I totally don't know. He's trying to help. <laughs> <laughs> um, We've already got a yeah. line worked out here. Yeah. All right. All right. We're going to take five. Take a five minute break. Uh, beverages or whatever. When we come back, um, we're going to kind of roll into scenes. Um, and, uh, you know, we'll kind of generate the carnival uh, on the fly as, as we go, go into that. So uh, take five and we'll be back.
nice, Jim. I like I like what we came up with there. Thank you. Yeah, it, uh, it was the the seer was the only one that really spoke to me. Mm-hmm. Well, I don't know if it spoke to me. Just the other ones. I didn't want to. I don't. Um, I I tend to stay away from characters that could have a seductive element to them. Mm-hmm. So, and that kind of looked like that was in a couple of the other mm-hmm. playbooks. Mm-hmm. Have you played this game a lot, Jesse? It seems like you are pretty comfortable with this system. No, I've never played this game before. Like, I've played like a fair amount of Monster Hearts and a little bit of Urban Shadows, and I feel like those are the two like big influences here. And I like the media that it's based on is stuff I'm really into. So that I think helps. Yeah, actually, I haven't done, I haven't done any of those things. The other one that was listed on the description was um, Penny Dreadful, which I am, mm-hmm. which I, I do know. That's actually I've never seen, although I didn't mean to get around to it. Yeah, it's good. I was I was disappointed that um, it had an ending. <laughs> So is Urban Shadows PBTA? Then? Yeah. yeah. It is. Okay. I really like Urban Shadows. Me too. All right. And is that basically then like, just kind of like Shadow Run? Like Shadow? No. It's more like Dresden Files. Hey, Bethany, I'm getting a weird, like, bump from your mic somehow. Like, it keeps getting this, like, bump, 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 bump sound. Huh. I don't know if you've got something that's bumpy against, or you have a second mic that's... Uh, could be either. Let me check. Yeah, if you have, a, like, a laptop mic or second mic, it might be picking up that. Okay. Yeah, for, for what it's worth, I've actually heard that when playing with you before, although never quite this loud or this um, uh, persistent. Huh, Okay. When when I play with Sherry, um, I got her a new mic, but it's really close, and she plays with stuff on the desk, and so I always have to tell her to. But <laughs> but that's that's very clearly something she's doing. So <laughs> yeah, that's also I I also fidget. So yeah, it doesn't sound uh, like that though. It's it's like I don't know if there's a fan or something that's blowing against something. Hmm. I oh, I think I know what it might be. Okay. Okay, is it still doing it? Yeah. Hmm. I'm not sure then. Okay. Well, we'll, we'll try to track it down here. Do that. Um, all right. So uh, what I want to do is I want to kind of roll into these scenes, do a little bit of framing, and in between the framing, I want to stop and I want to ask a question to to a player to, to frame something about the, the carnival here. And I want to kind of roll through that to get us to this first setup scene. Um, so the carnivals work on circuits. And it could be several years uh, that a carnival will be, be moving around uh, different areas out here in the far southwest. And as we come in on your carnival, uh, we're just now coming out of Arizona. And uh, you're heading into California, uh, into the areas outside of Los Angeles, into the basin and uh, some of the areas that are surrounding. You don't go into L.A. proper. Any of that close in stuff, that's just too risky. Uh, But there are all kinds of further out surrounding communities, small towns and things that are on the way. Um, But as you are uh, wagon training it, essentially uh, down the highway, Uh, you will see on the road up ahead, there is clearly a uh, a checkpoint Um, and you will see various cars stopped and you will see various police cars there. And you are in, you know, in, in truck cabs or on backs and things like that. Um, and the, the train, your group of, of uh, uh, 
cars and such will kind of slow down. Um, and you will see it looks like uh, Los Angeles Police Department like actually have cars here here and they're they're stopping cars and they're talking to people and and you can see that off the road there's a truck you recognize it's probably one of those Okies trucks people who fled here you know it's got that kind of broken down look to it all of the people's belongings stuff like that and it looks like uh, the cops have pulled them off to the side. Um, and as you you all stop and and kind of get get this uh, 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 traffic jam here waiting, your uh, manager gets out of of their cab to go and see what's going on. So let me ask you this uh, then, uh, Bethany. What is your manager? Who 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 is your manager? Is it a man, woman, old, young? Who is that? Um, old woman. Okay. Um, used to be a performer. Um, I don't know what she did, but, uh, and just kind of like, via attrition, um, is now the manager. Okay. And so this is Wilhelmina Backhouse, and uh, she gets down. She's you don't want to cross her. Um, uh, she she doesn't take shit from anyone. Um, uh, and what is unnatural about her, Bethany? What is what is the the weirdness that comes with her? Um, she can hear people's thoughts. Okay. Uh, it sounds like whispering to her, and she like complains about people whispering. <laughs> awesome, awesome! Like all the time, um, you're not sure how much she thinks that senility, and how much she actually realizes what's going on. Um, so you'll see her get out, and she goes up there to kind of march uh, up um, uh, to to go and see what's going on, and she'll walk up. And she talks to a couple people who are up close, and uh, uh, then she'll come back, and she comes down to each car, um, each truck. I'm going to assume, just for purposes of this, that that the four of you are in the same vehicle. Um, uh, are, do you suppose one of you is a, a driver, or do you have like a, a, a driver that's there um, with you? What do you What do you think, Jesse? I'm fairly certain that I do not drive. Okay. I have no idea how to drive, and I'm probably a little scared of, uh, of, of, of that. Not that I would let anyone know that. Um, You're really but, old, right? <laughs> yeah. Um, but uh, I don't know. Like, I feel like any of the other three, I like the idea of trying to figure out a way for Pearl to, to use the pedals. <laughs> I, I do, too. Like I, I, hand, I'm... Hand, 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 hand throttle and handbrake. Yeah, right. Uh, like it's a power thing for her, right? Yeah, Does totally. You, it's like, sure. Both Alfred and Sandra certainly know, know how to drive, but yeah, we're always the one driving. <laughs> okay, so uh, 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 Wilhelmina comes, uh, walks over to uh, the the passenger side window. Who's shotgun? Um, me. Yeah. Okay, Alfred, your shotgun. She does that. Taps on the window for you to roll it down. She's done this to the, the car in front of you. Oh, God. What is she going to say? Okay. And uh, she will come up, sort of step onto the running board, and she leans and she goes, So, all of you, I just want you all to know that uh, they are checking for people of, uh, how do I put this, uh, no visible means of support, and they are pulling them off the road keep them from coming into California. So uh, it's going to be a minute while they mess with some folks here. So here's what I'm going to ask all of you. When they come up, they're going to come and uh, uh, have probably have a little chat with y'all. So I want you to be all smiles and politeness for the nice, fine Los Angeles detectives. Can everybody do that for me? 
when was the last time I was rude to you, Wilhelmina? Yesterday. Go on. Oh, I'll try to. I'll try to be nicer today. Okay. Uh, pull that shawl up over a uh, over the bottom end of her on uh, so they don't uh, catch a whiff of that. <laughs> <laughs> And she'll climb down, and she goes along, walks to each of the, the vehicles, and then goes back into her own car. Um, and eventually, you will have that bit where, where they roll up. Wilhelmina's in the front vehicle, so she explains to him what's going on. Um, and uh, the detectives kind of, in that way, that says that they have a lot of power. And they don't give a shit about people, and they kind of saunter up uh, over, and and one of them kind of saunters up, kind of catches a glimpse of you, uh, driving, comes around to the driver's side there, uh, Pearl, and uh, kind of knocks to have you roll down the window. Hello, officer. How can I help you today? And there is that moment where you know, from a distance, he was like, "Oh, look at the beautiful." beautiful circus lady who's uh, up in the, the cab there. And then you roll it down and what does he see? <laughs> um, well, if we're traveling, um, it's probably, I mean, I'm not super clean on the best days, I guess. So now I probably smell pretty bad um, <laughs> and um, have, uh, my hair probably looks a little, a little crazy. And I'm, I'm picturing myself just kind of like, like I'm not, my, my, my tail is like hidden. So I'm just kind of like leaning forward. So it looks very awkward and, but I'm very polite. <laughs> and he's just gonna, uh, oh uh, yeah. Okay. You, you got yourself. <laughs> yeah, all fine. And, uh, he will wander on, um, does a little bit of, of, of talking to some others, and eventually they will let you roll on. Back behind you, you can see that they've got a whole family that they pulled out of their vehicle uh, that they are clearly going to send back the way they came, maybe after giving them a talking to uh, L.A. detective style. Um, but uh, the, the, the wagon train will roll on, you are headed to uh, a town called Hazelton. It's a town that you last came through uh, a couple of years ago. Uh, did okay at it. Um, you didn't make any enemy at that point, which was uh, something of a relief. Um, uh, and uh, you will roll out to the usual appointed just outside of town grounds, like a camp area, um, what would pass for that. Um, and it's late, like it's it's after dark by the time you get here. You'd hope to have been here before dusk, but now it's late. Um, and Wilhelmina will kind of tell everybody to, to not bother setting up tonight to just, you know, uh, get settled in and, and uh, just unload things uh, here. Uh, so, Jesse, let me ask you this, as everybody is kind of getting out of their various cabs and cars and so on. Um, we see them pulling out the tents but not putting it up and stuff. There are a number of other people that are like you that are monsters. That's what this carnival attracts. Um so tell me about somebody here who's at the carnival, another person who is pretty close to succumbing. Like it's a someone who is is clearly kind of given in to their darkness. Who is that? Um so I think we had somebody who was um who was like a wild animal tamer, right? Uh, a, a, a guy on like the edge of late middle age, um, you know, early to late 50s, right? Okay. Um, 
right, who, um, like, had this claim of historic past where he was a lion tamer with Barnum and Bailey's, um, and his, his, like, he really was, like, kind of, like, Beastmaster style, right? Like, he, he had this, like, able, whether that story was true or not in terms of his, uh, his, his history, right? Um, he really did have an ability to commune with animals, and so, like, over the years, you know, we'd had some wolves and maybe, maybe a bear once and like, you know, but as like things got worse and worse, like, you know, feeding, keeping an animal like that in, in decent condition is harder and harder. And, um, I think his, his mind sort of got more and more, like as we went through more of these animals, so we couldn't maintain them. Like his mind got a little bit more, uh, we'll say, um, be steel. Mm -hmm. Um, and you know, he's watching these creatures that he bonded with not be cared for the way that he would have hoped. And like his, his, his sort of, um, disgust for humanity and the way they treat, you know, other living creatures. Um, and I was not much help there either. Right. Um, you know, uh, sort of has been boiling over. And so, so let me ask you this. You know, uh, everybody's getting unloaded. Uh, I assume that that probably there are are cots in the the, the various uh, buses and, and wagons that you have, uh, trucks. Um, and uh, so you see this guy, this animal tamer. We'll call him Ron Walker. Um, you see him kind of as everybody's getting set up. Kind of getting getting ready for the night. He he clearly kind of sneaks off and uh, heads out. What do you want to do? Um, I think here's what I think I do. Mm -hmm. um, I think that I'm. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna follow him and keep an eye out for trouble. Okay. Just wanna, you know, like not, 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 yeah, not sneaky too much. Just like I'm gonna keep an eye on him as a, as he as he walks off. So yeah, he 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 walks off, goes on the edge. There's some barley, barley fields growing here. It's still when California was still doing more grain, um, and uh, he he takes off. You wander off to follow. Um, why don't you roll guile for me? You got it. Um, I roll my guile is pretty okay. And that is a seven plus one is eight. Eight. So uh, you get to ask one question here as you follow behind him as he heads out into the darkness. Um, so right there's, there's the, the the two the two good ones for this moment are what dark truth is hidden here and what tragedy is about to happen, and you know. Myrtle is nothing if not um, uh, someone who loves to watch a good tragedy. So uh, what tragedy is about to happen? So he is heading out here. It's the first time that he's been able to kind of sneak away here in the night. And he is going to wander around. You guys have been here a couple of years ago, so maybe he knows the town. You have the feeling he is going to go wander to the outlying farmhouses and see if he can't steal some animals. Uh, you know, either either a dog or a cat or even some livestock. Like he needs that, um, and that is that is what he is going to go do. Um, and you can see him walking carefully along the field edge. Uh, you know, it's super dark out. You know, just got the stars up above, and he is is heading there. Um, so I'm going to cut from you realizing that, um, and uh, we're going to come back to. The the, uh, the the circle of the wagons, um, Alfred. Uh, 
So the carnival is not in the greatest of shape, right? This is this is raggedy, rickety, that kind of thing. Uh, what is about to break down? What's the what's the thing that the carnival has? The important thing that you know is kind of on its last legs. I'm trying not to say the car because <laughs> it's just it's just too easy. We've well, got a number <laughs> of cars, right? Um, um, oh, um, um. We have an we have um, sort of a hybrid illusionist with okay. us who both is able to do um, do some illusions, but also supplements by kind of doing um, magic tricks. Okay, <clears throat> and uh, so they have the classic um, um, saw the assistant put the assistant in the box and saw them in half. Mm -hmm. And um, the failsafe is about to break on that. Yeah. So yeah, you see, uh, Karnak the Magnificent is is pulling these things together, and even as you're looking at this, as he's pulling out the box and kind of getting things set up, you have that vision of him pushing that blade down, and the screams going out across. Uh, the 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 tent. Um, what would you do? Uh, Gak. Of course, you know my my the 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 unacknowledged, perhaps uh, monstrous part of me is like, oh, I got to make that happen. I have to make that happen now. <laughs> yeah, I mean, now that you've seen it, it must come to pass, right? Right. So, um, I think that I would actually want to inspect this apparatus um hoping to find some way that it will happen without my intervention interesting um which in which in this case it sounds like that's actually true yeah yeah you look at it yeah it is but it might take something like a discern realities role to for me to actually know for sure maybe. well yeah you've got that that interesting move for this um uh well, that's for a person. Um, got the cards. Well, um, do you want to read the cards? Um, yes, of course. Um, let's let's have you roll Guile. All right. Um, Ooh. -hoo. Knocked it out of the park. Wow, look at that. So on a hit, you can ask three uh, questions about the past, present, or future, and they will uh, uh, MC will answer uh, honestly. Huh. Um. Um, so, um, what is the next thing I'm going to have to do to help the spirit of the goddess of justice? Hmm. Uh, Sandor is going to be confronted by something unjust and is not going to want to get involved. When that happens, you're going to need to push him to to act. Okay, and I'm 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 writing these down, so um, I can repeat them to you at any point if you want. In case you know, just uh, I mean, metagaming. In case you yes, uh, uh, that's why I'm recording things too. Oh, all right, of course. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, what's your second question? Sure. Um, let's see here. Um, I'm kind of so used to the discern realities question. I know. It's a little difficult to put my mind, um, <clears throat> put my um, mind in this way. Um, 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 to prevent having my next vision of great harm, whom should I avoid? Probably should stay away from Myrtle. She's the one most likely to be, be walking into some great danger here in the, the, the near future. Sure. Okay. I'm going to have you save your third question uh, because I'm going to come over to uh, Pearl. It's um, a fair bit of screen time, so that's yeah. fine. Uh, Pearl, um, most of the people here in the, the, the carnival are, like yourself, strange people people from darkness and so on, but there are a few people who are human. Uh, so tell me about one of these human people and, uh, you know, uh, they're just utterly human. And uh, why are they here and, and what do you guys do to keep them safe? Um. So... I'm thinking that we have um, this could go one of a couple ways. So I know um, in old timey freak shows there were people with like microcephaly, um, like people with with that just were born with um, small small like misshapen brains and heads. Mm -hmm. um, so I would think we may have someone like that here okay. um, who honestly their family just wanted them gone, um, put them in the, in the circus to get some money and get them away so that they didn't have to take care of them. Um, and I think we would have maybe a uh, maybe someone who is a little bit, I don't know, I actually don't know how old people with that condition live to. Okay. Um, so, so we're talking to like maybe a teenager kind of character. Yeah, so maybe, yeah, I mean, I figure I would be a teenager too, so maybe maybe around my age, maybe 15, 16, something like that. Male um, or female? Um, I say female. Yeah. So uh, there is a, a young woman named Lois, um, uh, and she has that just, I mean, she hides it. She's got a wig that she wears sometimes to kind of hide it away. The, 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 the sort of the uh, distension on the, the, the skull there. But otherwise, she looks okay. She's got a, a limp, um, and she's got this strange voice, um, but uh, she... She comes over to check on you and see how you are. And uh, uh, she's like, hey, how's it going? Did you oh, uh, with the, the, sh the cops and stuff? I think it's okay. We, we, you know, I don't, I don't think they, I don't think they saw my tail. So I think that's good, right? Yeah. Yeah, because that, that meant, uh, that's a lot of explaining that we, we don't need to do. Right. I think I think we're okay. How are you? Uh, I'm okay. Um, just a little tired. Um, uh, uh, so uh, can I uh, can can I can I brush your hair? Yeah, of course. 
Um, and, and this seems to be one of the things that, I mean, she loves that comb that you have. Yeah. Um, why does she love the comb? What is it that, about that? Well, I think it's, um, it's, it's kind of stands out because it's something um, clean and sparkly um, that kind of stands out from the rest of my um, rest of my appearance. And while I do like her, I am very like kind of like cautious and I'm, you know, saying just, you know, it's okay here. Let me take this out. You know, I want to be very protective of it. Okay. Um, so she, she may look at it and like it, but I, I'm, I'm, I'm naive, but I'm, I understand that some of something, some things need to be protected. So, okay. so she, she will, will, will kind of comb your hair. Um, and, and, you know, she's, she's kind of drawn to that, you know, yeah. just as you're kind of alluring in that strange way, this, this object also draws that attention. It kind of makes you a little, little nervous at the same time. Yeah. Um, Sandor, you will see Lois, You'll see uh, uh, Pearl over there. Uh, you'll see Alfred over poking around at uh, um, Karnak's uh, equipment there. Don't know where Myrtle went. Um, haven't seen her. Um, but as you were kind of standing there at the edge, looking around, uh, you will hear some noise uh, from the, the field behind you. Um, and... You will see, it looks like there's some people moving through the field there. What do you want to do? Um, I want to take a better look at them. Are these like our people or are these uh, locals or? Um, why don't you roll Guile? Uh, we'll do that. Oh, and. That's my guile. I think you're going to be good, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Nine. Uh, you got us one. Oh, yeah. So a nine. So you're in great shape. Um, uh, so uh, let me just t give you a couple of factual bits here, and then you can ask a question. On it. it looks to you like they're definitely strangers, um, and it looks like a man and a woman. Um, uh, and, uh, they look like they're, they're mis Mexican and they're kind of moving through the field. Um, what is your question from the, uh, uh, the keep an eye out for trouble move? Oh, um, what tragedy is about to happen? Um, they look like they're running away from something and, they're running here towards your camp. Um, okay. Um, great. Uh, yeah, I mean. What do you do? On the side of the humans, right? So um, I'll like approach them and tell them to come with me. Oh, and and they're, they, they're like kind of startled Right. But they, 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 and they, but they look and you see them kind of realize that you're not locals, that you're strangers. Mm -hmm. And they will look like maybe a husband and a wife, and they're maybe in their, their 20s, and they kind of follow, stumble along here. They look exhausted. Um, uh, and they kind of stumble into camp with you. Um, they look dazed, like this is this whole setup that you've got here with the, the magic and the, and the, the mermaid tank and the, the, all the other weirdness here is just freaking them out. Right. Um, well, so I'll take them to like the most mundane, um, thing I can think of, which is just like the back of a car. Okay. And tell them to hide there. All right. So you will, will get, get them settled in. And even as you're getting them settled in, you can see down the road these flashing police lights. Yeah. And they are coming this way. Um, 
okay yeah so i'm like okay get down lay down and i take some uh some tents like that are still wrapped up mm -hmm. just the, without the poles just like the canvas is um and yeah. i like pile it on top of them uh i'm like stay still it's, it's it'll be fine i'll get you out later okay they 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 get what you're doing and they'll 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 get down uh and and hide and you can kind of turn around as the the, the headlights of this police car are coming in um i'm going to cut away from from you we'll come kind of come back and bring alfred and uh um uh, pearl in on that moment um but i want to do uh uh let me ask you, Myrtle, when Ron uh, approaches this farmhouse, uh, do you do anything or are you just going to watch him do this? So I think I think what, what I would like to do, but mm -hmm. the timing may not work out, is get Sandor. Um, yeah, you could run back and get Sandor. Like, I think I want to, I think I'm like, this is not we need to protect ourselves and we need to protect these people perhaps, or at least their animals. Um, and, uh, we need to, I need Sandor seems the person most likely to be able to do the job. And so you will run back. Um, and I think we see the sort of montage of people coming together. Sandor, you kind of move over, you're closer where Pearl's at. Because that kind of blocks the way the police car is coming. Alfred, I assume when you see the flashers, you're moving that way as well. Uh, and Myrtle, uh, you come running into camp just as you see this police car. And it pulls to a stop, that kind of gravel, late night crunch sound. And uh, you will see this sheriff fingers in belt step out of the the car and comes uh walking over to where uh, uh the four of you because you're kind of standing sort of front and center and sandor you're imposing right so he comes over and he's like young man yes sir When did uh, you and your uh, folk get here in town? About 10 minutes ago, sir. Y'all, nobody here saw a couple of Mexicans running around here, did you? See nobody here but us. I think I want you to roll breath here. Okay. But it's not my strong. Well, I wrote a 10, but I have minus one breath. So, so that's, that's, that's still a nine. Um, so lying is not necessarily a strong suit, right? Right. Okay. Um, so the rest of you will see, you know, Sandor, so you can kind of tell when Sandor is, is on edge. Um, and, uh, uh, he, the, the sheriff will look at you. You can tell he's not satisfied, but he kind of looks at the four of you and uh, the camp and he says, well, if you see them, you need to call us. You need to come and get us because they are wanted criminals. What'd they do? Well, I don't think that really matters. They are criminals. And they are dangerous. 
and they need to be brought in if you see them. Well, how, how dangerous are, are we talking here? Should we, should we like keep you know armed guards out here, or? I don't think they'd mess with freaks like you. True enough. And uh, he will take a look at at the others there. We'll look at you, Pearl, um, uh, and uh, he will get go back and get back in his car. And I will see him kind of stop, get on the radio. And then backs up slowly and does that thing where he drives like super sheriff slow alongside the carnival for a while before he takes off. Right. Can, you I, gonna... can, I, can I do something in this scene? Absolutely. Ah, all right. So um, um, before he does this, I'm going to, I'm going to do something. Shame sure. So, um, um, as, uh, after, after, so can I insert myself sort of, um, yeah, absolutely. As he's, as he's moving back to his car, if you want to move up. Yeah. So, um, I, um, I try to casually, casually bump into him. Oh, wait, can you hear me? Yeah. Um, I, I, okay. I might have my mic in a bad place. I try to casually um, bump into him, and I'm gonna I'm gonna say, well, you know, um, you know, uh, thank you for thank you for um, thinking about the safety of our the safety of our camp, um, and try to grab his hand to shake it. Okay. Let's have you uh, roll or, breath. I think we know what the possible hard move is here. Uh, should you fail this roll? Sure. And let's see what happens because we, hey, we want to have some fun, right? Yeah. <laughs> Ooh, up uh, seven. That is a seven. So uh, you get to ask one question. <clears throat> um, Um, I'm going to go with what are you afraid I'll see? What are you afraid you'll see? He's afraid that you will see where the Mexicans came from and where and what they're doing with them. Fair enough? Yeah. He pulls his hand back. Have and a good night, officer. He'll get in his car. Um, Myrtle, you can come back as, as that scene is closing out. What do you say? Do you tell the, the group about Ron? I think what happens is I see... I, I see I see the cop driving away and I I ask just the group collectively I say was he asking about Ron or maybe some missing livestock No he was asking about Mexicans Okay All right They're they're over there they're they're under that tent over there I I don't need to hear about them I, I <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, Ron Xander Ron finally lost his shit um, and I don't know I don't know exactly what's what's pushing him here but uh, he went out I think looking for you know you know how you know how that like pair of hounds um, that he had, you know, doing tricks. Um, uh, you know, the one got hit by a car and the other just rolled over and died afterwards. Yeah, I remember them. 
Yeah, it was it was awful. Yeah. Anyway, it was it was bad. Well, I think he's. I don't know what I think he's he's looking to, to to fill the space that they're missing, but not not in like the normal way where you find a nice pet and train it up. But I, I don't know exactly what that means. I just know he's 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 off looking for something, and I mean clearly they're already suspicious enough as it is. We don't we don't need the locals. Um, we don't need Ron riling people up anymore. Can you? How we take care of this? And I think I think like this is this is like directed like pointedly at at Sander. Like I'm thinking like my brain at this moment is like in a little bit of a panic, and I'm just like physical force is what we need here. Um, even though obviously like everyone has skills that would help, so there's like a little bit of a like well. an odd thing where I'm like directed at him in like a very like in a way that maybe seems off. Yeah. I um I'm taking the tent, you know, out of the car again. Uh, cuz I don't want to smother these people with it. Um and uh just kind of shrug and like I mean, sure I'll go, but like I, you 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 don't want me doing anything to him directly. I mean, you could at the very least restrain him and bring him back. And the, the, the couple get up out of that car and they kind of stagger, wander over. And Pearl, they'll see you. And eyes get wide. And they kind of wander over. And the woman says... Serena, 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 Serena. Um, maybe. Serena. I'm a mermaid. See, 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 Serena. Yeah. See, see, see. <laughs> and and uh, she seems sort of fascinated by that. Um, and I think it's at that point that in the distance we will hear the ominous sound of a shotgun going off. And I think that's where we're stopping for tonight. Uh, we played till 1030, so this is where we're stopping. This is where we're starting with uh, a couple of escapees, an angry sheriff, and one of your own off uh, stealing uh, animals in the night. And we will begin there. Uh, next time, does that seem okay? Yes, I'm I'm whitelisted, and I still have a question. But... Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, let me have your question. <clears throat> well, um, so um, I did the I looked at the cards because I wanted to find out about like oh yeah know, the, this vision right yeah please so I suppose like I mean I have another question that's more interesting that seems like kind of a mundane question but it seems like I should use one of my questions you can ask whatever you want okay so my real question my, the more interesting question uh-huh we'll say that, that that one just came out of the card play or something like that um is um where is the darkness nearest to me right now I've asked about the future I want to ask about the present I think the darkness nearest to you, you, you will see Ron. We said he was kind of on the edge, like getting ready to succumb to it. And you can feel that that is boiling over in him. Like you will see that. Um, and know that he's going to take that last step off the precipice. Okay. Does that seem fair? Yeah. Okay. Um, Jim, I wouldn't be surprised because uh, Mickey uh, kind of dropped without without saying anything. I wouldn't be surprised if he didn't show up. So we'll keep an eye on the wait list and I will check in with him and make sure and see what's going on with that. Okay. So uh, we'll see if we can pop you up. Okay. Great. Okay. Uh, thank you guys very much. Um, uh, I, I, we've got cool characters here. I appreciate you letting me ha take the time to go through all this stuff because I, I really love what we've got here. And we're going to have the full, you know, two and a half to, to play out with these characters next time. 
um, and roll on. Um, XP is on a miss. That's the only XP system. So uh, I don't think anybody got a, a, a failure tonight, um, but we didn't have that many rolls. Um, I will check in at the beginning of the next session. And if you have changes you want to make to your character, or questions you want to ask, or things you definitely want to see or not see, I will do a check-in when we go to play next time. Uh, any questions before we wrap? All right, hearing none, then I will I will go ahead and stop the broadcast. I will try next time to we'll take ten minutes at the end of the session to to see what we think of the game and talk about that for a little bit. So Thanks I will so stop the broadcast.